welcome. So, in this module, I want to define what is spin order. Okay. For doing that, we will go back to the uh, models that we were looking at and uh, let us look at the free energy versus composition uh, diagram in a system which undergoes phase separation. So, the free energy versus composition diagram looks something like this. Right. This is what we have seen. So, there is a concave region and there is um, two wells and one maxima and uh, if you just look at the free energy of mixing the models we had, uh, it was symmetric and uh, the minima were at the same level, uh, but when you add uh, the, uh, the end uh, composition free energies G A for pure A and G B for pure B, then that is like a straight line. So, it uh, shifts and so the two minima need not be at the same level. And because we have drawn a continuous curve for the two end phases that we see, it means that the phases of these two um, uh, the crystal structures for these two phases is basically the same. Okay. If it is not so, what will happen if the, the phases are not the same, then we will have uh, two different free energies. Suppose, if I have one alpha phase and one beta phase and that is uh, uh, what forms the two phase structure, then alpha phase is a different phase and beta phase will be a different phase. Okay. So, this is for alpha, this is for beta. So, we can see that these two uh, free energy curves are independent curves. There is a region where you have uh, some sort of uh, concavity in the free energy curve. So, here also you have to draw a common tangent and the common tangent points will be the ones which will form the two phase uh, equilibria, because uh, the, the free energy curve has to be convexified, which means uh, this will be uh, alpha. Uh, up to this and then alpha plus beta and then this is uh, beta after this. So, so, this is what will happen, but this is by assuming that alpha and beta crystal structures are not the same, alpha um, crystal structure is not the same as beta crystal structure. Okay. However, the kind of curve that I have drawn in which we are assuming that it is a continuous variation means that the two phases are basically having the same crystal structure. So, sometimes they are uh, noted as alpha prime and alpha double prime for example, to indicate that it is the same crystal structure. The only difference is the composition, because remember this is free energy versus composition diagram. Right? So, this is pure A and this is pure B. So, which means that when you draw a common tangent, let us draw a common tangent, then you get the two phases. So, you have let us call this as alpha prime and this as alpha double prime and alpha prime is rich in A, because this is closer to the A point, alpha double prime is richer in B. So, so you have a system which phase separates, because remember this is the concave region. So, that is not uh, uh, preferred thermodynamically. So, the convex regions are the ones that are preferred. So, the concave region is replaced by this convexified version, which is a straight line, uh, which is the free energy of a mechanical mixture of alpha prime and alpha double prime. Depending on composition, only the volume fractions of alpha prime and alpha double prime will be different, but the end compositions of alpha prime and alpha double prime, uh, these will be the same composition anywhere in this region. So, we have a convexified curve and we have these two phases, one is rich in A and the other one is rich in B. We are trying to look at what happens when this system undergoes phase separation. So, we know that these are the points where it is going to undergo phase separation. In terms of the phase diagram, okay. so what we have is that at this particular temperature, remember this is drawn at some temperature T naught. So, phase diagram is for temperature, so we have the T naught point versus composition. right? So, composition versus temperature is basically the phase diagram. So, at this point, so there will be this and at this point there will be this. So, at different temperatures then you will draw this kind of free energy versus composition diagrams and then you will trace these uh, uh, points 
and that is what gives you a phase diagram. So, basically in this system the phase diagram will be something like that right. So, this is what the phase diagram will look like because this is a phase separating. So, this is basically the miscibility gap meaning that in this region there is no complete mixing of A and B atoms and it will phase separate into a mechanical mixture consisting of A rich regions and B rich regions. So, that is what is described by the miscibility gap. Now, what is spinodal? Okay. So, we are going to describe spinodal and it has a physical significance and meaning. So, that is what we are going to discuss in the next module. So, let us define spinodal. So, how do I define spinodal? So, let us look at this free energy versus composition diagram once more. Let us look at this region. So, in the case of uh, Fick's law of physical meaning also we have discussed this. So, if you take for example, composition as a function of position and if you see that the composition changes like that, this, this means what the curvature is negative. That is the reason why because the Fick's first law says dou C by dou T is equal to D del square C by del X sorry the fixed second law says this uh, B being constant uh, and, and positive. So, this uh, sign then decides how the composition is going to change with time. So, this is a region with negative curvature which means a composition is going to keep dropping. Similarly, we said that if you had a composition with distance you know I need to distinguish between X which is distance and X B which is composition of B okay. uh, probably it is bad notation but uh, I hope you understand from the context uh, what is what. So, if you have composition profile like that, that means uh, del square C by del x squared is greater than 0, which means the composition is going to keep increasing at this point. This is how we explained saying that if you had sinusoidal variation in composition, this is going to come down, this is going to go up. So, you are going to have a homogenized composition. In other words, we know that if you take the second derivative of the concentration with respect to position, then that basically gives the curvature. In a similar fashion, if I have G versus X B, then this is basically given by the curvature of this expression. So, what is it? So, it is sometimes denoted as G double prime and this is greater than 0. And what is G double prime? G double prime is nothing but del square G by del X B squared, keeping everything else a constant, right? Temperature, pressure, everything I am keeping a constant, and uh, so partial derivative because free energy depends on everything. So, when you are taking the derivative, you want to keep all the others a constant, and then this curvature is positive. By the same token, if you look at the curvature in this region, this is a region where G prime is less than 0 because remember this curvature it looks exactly like this cap. Okay. So, this concave curvature region, okay, some part of the concave curvature region, you know, concave curvature region is there everywhere, but this part has the G double prime to be less than 0. Now, if it is positive here, if it is negative here. So, somewhere it is going to cross at 0. So, there are two points where G double prime is equal to 0. In the phase diagram, if I also mark these compositions and similarly at every temperature I do that you know the at a different temperature if I draw a different uh, free energy versus composition curve that might have uh, these uh, G double prime equal to 0 points going towards the center of the composition or might be going away. It depends on whether you are at higher temperature or lower temperature. So, in other words you will have a set of points which are described by these points. What are these points? these are points where del square G by del X B squared equal to 0 okay, or G double prime is equal to 0. The points where G double prime equal to 0 are called the spinodal points and the plot of these points on the phase diagram 
basically gives you the spinodal region inside the miscibility graph. Okay. So, let me draw the free energy curve once again to make it clear as to how the phase diagram looks. Okay. So, this is the T versus X B. So, I have a miscibility region and inside the miscibility region I have another region and what do these uh, uh, curves represent? Uh, these curves basically represent the points on the free energy versus uh, composition curve where G double prime is equal to 0. What do these points represent? So, this is spinodal region and this entire region right, which includes this spinodal is basically the miscibility gap. Right. Miscibility gap is the region where it is going to be a mechanical mixture of we said alpha prime plus alpha double prime. Inside the miscibility gap, there is a specific region which you can identify by looking at the free energy versus composition curve and looking at where the second derivative of the free energy with respect to composition becomes 0 and that region when it is marked is known as the spinodal region. Okay. So, this basically is uh, the miscibility gap. Okay. So, this is miscibility gap is basically obtained by the common tangent construction. Right. So, so where the miscibility gap points are are basically from the these are obtained from the common tangent construction. We take the free energy, we construct a common tangent and where the tangent touches the free energy versus composition curves are basically the points at that temperature and at every temperature we do this. So, we identify all the points, we draw the line that gives us the miscibility gap. Miscibility gap is the region where it will be a mechanical mixture of the two phases, one is A rich, other one is B rich. And if you look at the free energy versus composition diagrams and look at where the second derivative is becoming 0, that is known as the spinodal and you can mark a spinodal region inside the miscibility gap. Okay. Now, as you can see, because the miscibility gap uh, is the basis and the miscibility gap and spinodal actually require that your free energy versus composition diagram has a, has a concave curvature and using your regular solution model, you know that such concave curvatures will develop only when omega is greater than 0. In other words, this kind of phase diagram implies, this is very important, this kind of phase diagram implies using a regular solution model that we have a positive deviation from ideality. Remember, we have defined an ideal solution as one which has, so ideal meant omega equal to 0, right. Greater than 0, it will undergo phase separation. So, that is what will lead to spinodal also. Spinodal is also defined by the regions inside this uh, concave region where the G double prime becomes 0, right. So, so if you had a free energy versus composition curve which is like this, you will not be able to identify this point. So, this kind of spinodal region is always associated with this type of phase diagram which by our discussion on regular solution model indicates that there is a positive deviation from ideality. What does a positive deviation mean? It means that the system does not like A B kind of bonds, unlike bonds it does not like. It wants to have all A A bonds or all B B bonds. That is the reason why it phase separates in the first place. So, A rich regions are there and B rich regions are there. Okay. The system would prefer to have as many A atoms surrounding A atoms and as many B atoms surrounding B atoms. So, that is the reason why it phase separates. So, this is something that we know. So, this kind of free energy versus composition diagram implies positive deviation from ideal. Okay. Now, what is the physical significance of this spinodal region? Okay. Now, this spinodal region implies or, or indicates the separation between what is known as metastable and unstable. Right. What is the spinodal line? 
spinodal line separates the metastable from the unstable. What is the meaning of metastable? What is the meaning of unstable? Okay, so, it is a our definition spinodal is obtained by looking at g double prime equal to 0. Okay, you take the free energy versus composition diagram, you take the second derivative, you look at wherever the curvature becomes 0 and you plot all those points on the phase diagram at different temperatures you find out where this curvature is becoming 0 that basically gives you the spinodal line. The physical significance of the spinodal line is that it is the boundary between the metastable and unstable regions inside the miscibility gap inside the two phase region. You have a two phase region and the two phase region has some metastable regions and some unstable regions. Spinodal line is basically the one that is distinguishing the metastable from the unstable and wherever the curvature is less than 0 that is the unstable region, wherever the curvature is greater than 0 that is the metastable region. So, what is the meaning of metastable and unstable? We will use the mechanical analogy that is given by Kahn and we will try to understand what it means. So, that is what we will do in the next module. Thank you.